Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about walking six miles a day, how I walk six miles a day. This is something I get a lot of questions about, and I'd like to tackle it on this podcast because I haven't really talked about it very much. In 2016, really in 2015, I I kind of started this walking habit. I got a Fitbit in 2014 for, for Christmas, and my Fitbit was the first real reality check uh, for me as far as how sedentary my life had become. I will always be grateful to Fitbit because it was a a reality check. It showed me that I really had gotten into some bad habits with just being an inactive person. And so, you know, when I first got my Fitbit, I was, you know, thinking, well, maybe I should do 10,000 steps. And I kind of just played around with it a lot um, in in like maybe the first year. I enjoyed the Fitbit a lot because it gave me uh, motivation because it gives you these little badges, (laughs) these little, you know, they're electronic, so they're not really real. (laughs) But um, uh, but it, it was enough to motivate me to move more. And in 2015, I was going to the gym. And so sometimes I would like, you know, go for uh, a run on the treadmill and I was doing CrossFit and I was doing powerlifting. And uh, eventually I got injured in uh, 2015. I was doing a deadlift and and with poor form (laughs) and I got injured. And really the only exercise I could do without, you know, really hurting was walking. And I was really disappointed because I thought, there's no way that I'll be able to lose weight just by walking. I I was really, I I mean, it was one of those things I had always heard, you know, if you want to lose weight, the eating is the most important side of the equation. But I really was resistant to that idea because to me, I love to eat and I loved food and exercise. I felt like I could probably, you know, turn up the the heat on that, you know, really work out hard. And and maybe then uh, I wouldn't, I would still be able to lose weight. So it was really kind of devastating to me when I did injure my back because I just, I could see myself just becoming uh, really inactive again. And I thought I was doomed to just regain the weight. And I actually did start regaining some weight that year. Um, And uh, because I was, I was kind of, you know, uh, at a loss of, of what could I do now? Because this powerlifting thing, which I had really gotten into, and it had really done a lot of great things, I think for my confidence and, um, and it got me, uh, you know, motivated to improve, uh, I couldn't do that anymore. So I started saying, well, I really can walk. I'll, I'll see if that will work. And I really didn't think it would work to help me lose weight. And I will say right now, I don't really think exercise is all that important when it comes to the weight loss journey at least not in the way that most people think about it. I think most people are like obsessed with calorie burn. And I mean, I know I was, I was like, oh yeah, you got to burn the calories. It's got to be really high intensity. It's got to be really difficult. And that's what will help, you know, melt the pounds away. But what I found was that, you know, when I was working out really, really hard and I was lifting really heavy, I was really, really hungry. It really increased my appetite by a lot. And I think psychologically, I also kind of felt like, oh, well, I've kind of earned, you know, more food. And so I think that, you know, if you're if you're right now in a place where you really can't exercise, maybe physically you just can't, don't let that prevent you from trying to lose weight because really in my experience eating was the side of the equation that once I got that on track then the weight loss took care of itself and I've talked to a lot of people who have you know they've lost the weight uh, with no exercise at all so you know I started going for walks in 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 2015 after I had injured my back I really started going for more walks and and what I started to notice was you know I really enjoyed walking. I, I had been going to the gym every day um, since, you know, the beginning of 2015. But when I decided to just start walking, I started to realize like, oh, I don't really need my gym membership. I really enjoy this walking thing. I'm an introvert. I don't I don't really like going to the gym, you know, being around a lot of people and, and having to make small talk and stuff. I enjoy just being off by myself, going for walks. 
And so I, I kind of experimented with it. You know, I would I, I was not real consistent. I would go for long walks and I would feel, you know, pretty accomplished. Um, but I wasn't being really consistent. And in the beginning of 2016, that's when I really said, OK, I, I'm going to simplify everything. I'm going to make it really, really easy. And so that's when I committed to start walking six miles every day. What I told myself was it had to be easy or else I wouldn't do it. So I told myself I could walk as slowly as I wanted to um, because I knew about myself that uh, walking uh, at, a, at a fast pace, you know, trying to speed walk was so annoying and I hated it. <laughs> so um, and I was really resentful of, you know, going for walks if I tried to go at a fast pace. So I said, OK, I'm just going to walk at a slow pace. So that's what I started to do. I started going for six mile walks, which was 14,000 steps on my Fitbit. My only rule was that I needed to have those steps in by midnight that night. So I just wanted to get those last steps in before my Fitbit knew it was the next day and would like start the count over. And that was my only rule. And what I noticed about myself once I committed to these steps was a lot of times it was, it was like almost, you know, midnight before I would get those last steps in. And I started to notice that, you know, I was, I was, you know, as it was, you know, late every night, I started to recognize that I was starting to have excuses as to why I couldn't get my steps in maybe sometimes. And so I told myself, you know, um, I bet I could get these steps inside if I really tried hard. And this was like a foreign concept to me because previous to this, you know, I would just go outside and I would walk, you know, around the neighborhood. But what I started to notice about myself was I would start to feel like, oh, I don't want to be out here walking at 1030 at night, 11 o'clock at night. You know, people are going to think I'm weird or something like that. And um, and so I could see myself in the future uh, using that as an excuse to just not go for the walk. So I said, OK, I, I got to change that. I got to prevent myself from making that excuse. So I thought, you know, if I could do these steps inside, then I would never have an excuse really to not get these steps in. So I started housewalking, which is exactly what it sounds like. We were in, at that point, I think the house was about maybe 1,500 square feet. And I would just walk around the house. I, I mean, inside, I would just walk, you know, from the kitchen to the dining room, around the dining room table, you know, over to my bedroom, around the bed, you know, and I would just walk and walk and walk until I got my six miles in. And after the first day that I did that, I realized I don't have an excuse to not get these steps in. The weather is always great inside, right? And it's, you know, it's temperature controlled and, and you don't have to worry about, you know, rain or wind or any kind of weather. So that's what I did. I started housewalking. And it takes about two hours uh, in order for me to get my steps in because I walk at a slow pace, about three miles an hour. I don't, I don't time myself. Um, it's just a question that I get asked a lot. And so I, you know, would look at the clock sometimes and realize, oh, it's about two hours. And I never had a rule for myself either about, you know, when I had to do the steps. It, it was not that, it, you know, I had to do it in a fasted state or, you know, I would always do it after supper or anything like that. Um, in fact, in the beginning, it was all about just trying to sneak my steps in throughout the day and take breaks because, you know, in the beginning, I was a lot heavier and I, I, I didn't um, have the stamina. So I would, you know, need to sit down and take a rest. And then, you know, after I felt rested, I would stand back up and I would get some more steps in. A lot of times it was like just a thousand here and a thousand there. A thousand was about 10 minutes worth of walking. And when I chunked it down like that, it was a lot easier, a lot more attainable. I also bribed myself with social media because at that time I always felt guilty if I was on social media and, you know, sitting down, sitting down doing that. So instead I told myself, okay, if you're up getting your steps in, then you can be on social media as much as you want. And eventually I realized like, well, I don't really like being on social media that often because I was starting to notice my, you know, reactions as I was browsing social media. And I started to realize like, oh, it kind of makes me a little bit miserable a lot of times <laughs> to be on Facebook or to be on Instagram or something. So I started, you know, watching uh, Netflix, just binge watching shows on there, uh, which helped the time to go by faster. I also would, you know, start video chatting with, you know, friends and family members and stuff like that. And that made the steps go by quicker. And I started listening to podcasts, which was really cool to me because I was learning a lot. But overall, it was all about learning how to just enjoy the six miles. And, and what I found out for myself was the calorie burn 
you know, I don't know. Uh, people point out like, hey, you're burning, uh, you know, a lot of calories when, when you're doing that. You know, walk in six months, two, two hours of walking, you're burning some calories. And that is true. But I would also argue or point out it probably increases my appetite. So would I, you know, have lost the weight if I wasn't walking the six miles? I think yes, except I will point out uh, that for me, the big the big benefit of walking six miles a day has been how much it has uh, helped me with uh, my thinking, with, uh, you know, working through the things that were causing me to emotionally eat in the first place. Uh, going for a really long walk just helps me get perspective on things and helps me to think through things. And, and um, that's not something that I've found that I can do as well. Like when I just try to sit down and figure something out, I don't do as well as if I just go out and go for a really long walk. And I got to say, you know, now that I've been doing this for years now, um, I love how handy it is to be able to just walk for really long ways and and not feel exhausted. You know, I remember there was a time in my life where going to Walmart, you know, was this taxing thing. You know, I would just be tired and give out by the time I got back to my car. But now, you know, just a few uh, weeks ago, we were in New York City and we walked 18 miles that day and I felt great. You know, I could have gone many more miles um, when I walked uh, my 100,000 steps to raise money. Uh, for the well for uh, Jezza Kinship, that was 43.2 miles that I walked in a single day. And it, looking at that and, and seeing like how far I've come has been really gratifying. So I would encourage you, you know, if, if you're wanting to start with some sort of exercise, I would offer walking as a great option because most people, you know, unless, unless you have a disability, you can walk some, it, you know, no matter where you're starting out, you can, you know, just say, okay, I just want to set a, you know, a small step goal and just start wherever you're at. Just, you know, stand up and walk around. And w when you feel like, okay, I can't go any further, then sit down and take a rest and see how many steps you can get in. And then just, you know, work on setting little personal bests. That was something I did um, in the early days of, of my walking. I would um, have a goal that each month I wanted to set a personal best for steps. And um, the cool thing about that was as my personal best got higher and higher, it actually made the daily walking that I was doing, that daily six miles, seem really, really easy by comparison. Uh, because, you know, like if you are, if your goal is always just say six miles, um, then when you do it like a 10 mile day, then the next time that you go back and you do six miles, it's like, oh, wow, this didn't take long at all. So it helps, you know, kind of shift your perspective a little bit. But walking has been one of those things that just gave me a daily victory. And, and look, you know, that's another thing in the weight loss journey, a daily victory can be pretty huge because, you know, we can't control the scale day in and day out. And, you know, I think over the long term, yes, you can control the trend. You can, you know, lose weight over the long term. But daily fluctuations can be really frustrating. But if you have that daily win, that, that thing that you really can control, which in my case was a step goal, I could control whether I got those steps or not, then it's just, it made a really big difference. And I think it really did help me to stick to my plan over the long haul. So if you want to start walking, I would recommend, you know, just start with what you can do right now and then slowly work your way up to whatever you feel is a good goal. I, I will also add that once I got to walking six miles a day, I said, OK, that's plenty each day to do. I, I knew about myself that I'm, if I made this any more than that, I wouldn't stick with it. So listen to yourself when you say, OK, this is all I'm willing to do each day. Just stick with that step goal. It doesn't need to be six miles. It can be whatever you want it to be. But I think you'll find that it can be a very enjoyable hobby that can really help you along the weight loss journey. So thank you for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Today's episode was brought to you by my book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, How I Lost Over 80 Pounds and Kept It Off Eating Whatever I Wanted. To get your copy, simply follow the link in the show notes.